Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Brown. I am the founder of Restful Sleep MD, where I teach busy women like yourself to prioritize sleep for your health and so that you can thrive and reach your fullest potential. So the question today is, how much alcohol can affect my sleep, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, that occasional nightcap versus, you know, if I'm binge drinking, what exactly is going on? So alcohol and its effect on sleep has been studied for decades, really. And it still seems to be a little bit confusing because what happens is most people find out that when they do drink alcohol, they're able to sort of fall asleep. And so it's been used. It's actually one of the most frequently used sleep aids for people who struggle with insomnia. And I'm going to be talking about why that may not necessarily be the best alternative when it comes to getting you good sleep. One thing we know is that alcohol actually is more likely to harm your sleep than help. And there are four main ways that it can affect your sleep in a way that's not positive in a detrimental way. Number one is that alcohol literally is a sed sedative, right? It's a sedative, it puts you right to sleep. And we know that being sedated is completely different from natural sleep. And they've done studies where they've looked at the brain waves when you're under sedation, for example, if you're having anesthesia and things like that, compared to when you have natural sleep. And those brain waves are completely different. We don't wanna be sedated. <laughs> You want to have natural sleep. Then the second is that it actually causes more sleep disruptions. And the way this works is that you have a lot of what you call micro arousals. And so you may not even be aware of it, but alcohol actually fragments your sleep, especially in the second half of the night, because it's rapidly or it's quickly metabolized by our liver. And so after that, you start to get this effect where you're waking up frequently or you're having these arousals. And so that feeling you have in the morning when you wake up, after, you know, Saturday night cap or something of that sort, where you're waking up really tired, you're waking up very groggy, you may feel really drowsy, you may feel, you know, drowsy when you're driving and you may just really not feel as alert, is actually because you've not had restful sleep. Now, number three is that it actually decreases your REM sleep. And we go through different stages of sleep. We go through what you call light sleep, uh, we go through deep sleep and so light sleep and deep sleep make up your non-REM sleep and then your your REM sleep, which is your dream sleep. And more recently, we're starting to kind of understand what REM sleep is for. And it seems like it's a really very important part of our sleep because it has been shown to be related to mood, um, learning. It's been shown to be related to just emotion regulation and things of that sort. So when you're deprived of of REM sleep, you're going to have the impact during the day. Now, our body actually always will get what it wants. So our body has a way of knowing that we're not getting as much REM sleep. And so, the, especially the first half of the night. And so if you do sleep in, if you, and you may have experienced this, where you suddenly then start to have this really vivid dreams, very intense dream at the latter part of the night after you've taken alcohol. And what that is, is a phenomenon that we call REM rebound. And it's your body's way of trying to compensate for all the REM sleep that you have missed, which is not ideal. We want that REM sleep, you know, a little bit in the in the earlier part of the night and then it sort of increases over the course of the, the night rather than just all come at once. So then the fourth one, which actually is something we really need to pay attention to is alcohol can make obstructive sleep apnea worse. So sleep apnea is when you have these pauses in your breathing during sleep, right? Who wants to do that? That's not a good thing. You want to breathe... <laughs> all night when you're sleeping, right? So what happens is that we have this relaxing of our upper airway, of our throat, and so it sort of shuts briefly 
um, periodically and you may first hear snoring but then you may start to experience pauses or you might even not have pauses and you still have sleep apnea and you know the interesting thing about this is that studies have shown that even if you didn't have a history of sleep apnea before if you drink alcohol you actually may have sleep apnea because of that and so really something to pay attention to so these are four reasons of how alcohol can affect our sleep and a lot of times why do people use alcohol so that's the next thing a lot of times people use alcohol either you know just for relaxation you're hanging out it's a, it's the weekend you're with friends and so doing that from time to time may be okay to some degree depending on how you're feeling but many times people do use it as to try to fall asleep because they have either struggling with insomnia and so it becomes this vicious cycle where they're not able to sleep they know that when they drink alcohol at least they'll be able to get some sleep but then they wake up in the morning they feel really unrefreshed because your sleep is not really restful when you have alcohol and guess where we're going to we're then going to caffeine so then we drink some coffee because we want to be more alert and so we drink coffee we drink coffee and then at night we have a difficult time being able to sleep because caffeine is a stimulant and so we drink more alcohol and so you can imagine how this kind of vicious cycle then starts right and so the important thing is that we really 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 need to be uh, be careful about what we're doing or the reason why we're drinking the alcohol what we're trying to achieve and so then the next question is how much is too much can just one drink you know will that cause all this you know side effects with my sleep versus if i am drinking all night and the answer is that it varies it varies with every individual some people you know especially in women studies have actually shown you you actually have a completely different way by which you're metabolizing the alcohol so the effect you would see in a woman who drinks one glass of wine is kind of different from what you would see in a man and so they've actually done studies there was a study in 2018 where they looked at how much alcohol was likely to affect our sleep and so what they did was they had these three groups they had what you call sort of a low dose right or low amount they had a moderate amount and then they had a high amount of alcohol and then they looked at their sleep quality and so for those who had a low amount of alcohol their sleep quality was decreased by about nine percent for those who had sort of that moderate amount and the way they described moderate amount was probably taking about one serving uh, per day of alcohol and that's for women for men i think it was about two servings so moderate amount of alcohol decreased your sleep quality by about 24 percent and then for high amounts of alcohol which is greater than one serving of alcohol decreased your sleep quality by about 39 percent so we can start to see that even though what you would consider as really very very low amount was enough to actually affect your sleep quality and we can tell that over time you know that could really cause some consequences which we don't want so what do we then do do we not drink alcohol um and so the answer is not to be you know puritan about this but really just for you and awareness and that's really what this is about that's what this this show is about really to empower you with information so you can make the right decision for you what i would recommend is if you will drink alcohol you probably don't want to drink it just before bed so some people will talk about about one hour to two hours actually i would say about four hours or so you really want to avoid drinking um, alcohol just in terms of if it's affecting your sleep and you want better sleep that would be something to consider and as well i would recommend that you drink a lot of water because that would help your body get rid of it faster the second thing I would recommend is to practice healthy sleep habits, right? Practice healthy sleep habits, avoid caffeine before bed, um, make sure your room is cool, it's dark, make sure that you're avoiding the use of devices before bed. So really those healthy sleep habits will help you to sleep better. And then the third thing is seek help. Seek help, one, if you're having issues with your sleep, if you're having issues with falling asleep, or staying asleep or you find yourself waking up early and you're really having a hard time during the day seek help seek help if you notice that you are using alcohol as your sleep aid seek help 
because that there are other strategies, there are other treatments that are evidence-based that can help with your sleep, with your insomnia, if that's the case, without the side effects that you get. Okay, and one of those treatments or one, the mainstay of treatment for insomnia is what you call cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. In some situations, you may need medicine, but this is a behavioral therapy that does not have the side effects for, of alcohol. And then another reason why you would seek help is if alcohol dependency is an issue, there's help out there for you. So in this episode, really, I've talked about what alcohol does to our sleep, how alcohol impacts our sleep. We've talked about how much alcohol impacts our sleep versus not. And we've also talked about how we can improve our sleep if we're needing alcohol. What are the alternatives that we can use instead of alcohol? So I hope this has been helpful. And if it has, I would love it if you share this video, if you click subscribe, so you'll be the first to know when a new a new episode drops. And, and comment, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're feeling. Let me know if there's content or questions you have that you would like me to answer for you. And that's really what I'm here for. And until next time, I hope you rest well.